in our scripture, our gospel text from today, our worship team has chose for you is from Matthew 8, where Jesus calms the storm. Put yourself on the boat, and maybe it's easy for us to do. Just before the storm, put yourself just before the storm as the winds began to kick up and the reports came in and our worries and anxieties went up. Imagine what the disciples must have felt all those years ago with Jesus on board. It begins, then he got into the boat and his disciples followed him. Without warning, a furious storm came up on a lake so that the waves swept over the boat, but Jesus was sleeping. The disciples went and woke him saying, Lord, save us, we're going to drown. He replied, you of little faith, why are you so afraid? Then he got up and he rebuked the winds and the waves and it was completely calm. The men were amazed and asked, what kind of man is this that even the winds and the waves obey him? A few days ago, like many of you, I went through one of the most challenging days of my life. Um, I got up, it was a normal day like any other day on Monday, went to work, went to church, got a report on my phone that some from friends in Des Moines, uh, I saw on Facebook that there were 100 mile an hour winds, it's coming your way in Cedar Rapids, Iowa City, you should batten down and be ready. And we were, but we weren't ready for anything like this. And when I experienced the storm, as all of you did, the, the, the nerves, the, 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 the scaredness in my heart went up, my heart rate went up, and then I got the report from my wife that half of our roof was missing. A tree didn't hit it, thank God, I know many of you had that. But um, just the wind swept all the, the, the shingles and, and tar paper off down to the plywood in our own home, and we had water in our master bedroom and in our bathroom. And my wife was frantic, and I was concerned. Um, you know, starting to hear reports from friends and neighbors and see the devastation. And I did what I could to batten up our hatches. We were blessed to have someone from our small group come over, uh, a contractor and a couple guys, and they helped patch up our roof. And I got to a place of, of where I could have the internet to connect with our staff members and see how they were doing and start to assess needs. and. The first thing I see when I popped up on my phone was that Hawkeye football was canceled. And I said, that's it. <laughs> I, can't, I can't take anymore. <laughs> I can deal with a storm. <laughs> Lord, I can deal with uh, family issues. I can deal with church issues, job issues. I can't deal with Hawkeye football being canceled due to the pandemic. Um, and that was just it for me. And it was so stupid. I mean, sports, it's not is important in the grand scheme of things, right? Life is important. That's what's important to God. But that was, that was it for me. Um, and I since uh, got over my pity party <laughs> and started to put my, roll my sleeves up like many of you and get to work cleaning up our yard, cleaning up our neighbor's yards. And uh, when we got our roof patched up, then we went down the street and I said, you know, I think uh, there was another church member down the street could use these couple tarps that we didn't use. We were blessed that our neighbors brought over tarps to us so we can put on our roof. We've got like eight or nine different multicolored tarps. It looks like Joseph, the amazing colored dream coat roof at our house right now. So we took a couple tarps down in the neighbor and a few more neighbors came and joined us and then a few more and a few more and, and we patched that neighbor's roof up, lickety split. And we're sitting there, eight or nine of us guys up on the roof and had a beer at the end of the day. One of the most challenging days I've ever had in my life. And there was calmness and there was peace. And I realized through my neighbors and through the good people of Cedar Rapids, that God is still with us. He was there on that roof at the end of the night. God is still very much with us and he was with us. I felt God's presence in the presence of those other men. 
that it was with my fellow companions up on that roof, some believers in Christ, some atheists, some non, many non-church goers, but we're all working together on one common cause to help us recover. And I can't help but think that that's what this strange collection of men must have felt that Jesus gathered together the 12 when they got on the boat and the storm began to rise. I imagine their fear and their nervousness, their anxiety began to rise and, and they wonder, they question out loud, where is God? Where is God in all this? Where, where is, where is our, our Savior? The one that's supposed to save us, where is he? I'm sure many of you have asked that through all of this. Where is God in the storm? How could God let this happen? Look at this. If there is a God, how could that omnipotent being let this happen? Where were you? I imagine the disciples asking that. They've seen some amazing things from Jesus at this point. Him heal people from the grave. Him bring people from sickness back to health. People that were years long outcasts of society. Healing them and bringing them back in. Turning water into wine. Turning stones or turning, uh, making bread out of a few loaves of bread and fish. Feeding multitudes of people. They've seen miracle after miracle after miracle. They knew this Jesus was something special. They knew that this Jesus was the living God among them, the Savior. They knew they had the ace in the hole in their pocket, and yet where was he? Where was God? What are you doing back there? Are you sleeping? We need you, man. Come on. And what they realized when Jesus woke up and God unvased by it all, which just amazes me. I wish I could be more like Jesus. Unfazed by it all. Gets up and says, ye little faith. Don't you know who I am? I'm God. <laughs> I got this. I can calm this with a word. Watch. Calm. The whole thing calms. They look at each other and say, who can do this? Who among us can speak a word calm? And it all goes away. Only a deity can do that. Only the one who has the power over the winds and the storms. And they realized that God was with them all along. I want to give you three things today that I've learned from this scripture in response to our current storm, the most devastating, what do they call it, derecho. Still learning that word. I think that's going to be with us for a while. An inland hurricane in Iowa. Who's ever heard of that? I'm 45 years old. I've never heard of anything like that. I didn't know such a thing existed. But we went through it. We lived through it. And I want to give you three things to take away from this scripture that I've, I've absorbed in light of what we've been through. And that is to trust him, right? To wake him and to help him. First of all, trust him. Trust that God is with you in the storm. From the very beginning, in the middle when it got brutal and scary, and now in the cleanup, God has been with us all along, just like Jesus was on the boat. Trust him. I've had real trouble with that lately, and I, I'm sure you have too, but the call is still there to trust him. The second is to wake him. The disciples went and they woke Jesus. They said, hey man, get up. We need you here. Help us with this thing. This is crazy out here. This is life threatening. Come on, man. <laughs> get involved. They woke him up. And you and I need to do the same thing. Wake him. Nudge him. Right? Pray to him. Call upon him for this this time to be with you and to help you. Dear Jesus, be with us. Give me the strength today to fight another day. Give me what I need today and let tomorrow worry about tomorrow and take care of yourself, friends. Know your limits. This can't be moved in a day and it can't be moved by you alone. You need help. And you're only one person. You're only one family. 
you're only one neighborhood. More will come, more people will come, more Christians will come. I'm getting texts and emails from my church friends all over the country ready to get in cars right now. And some of them are on their way to help and they're ready to help us. So uh, wake him, trust him, wake him. Say, God, we need your help, pray for help and call upon God, go to Jesus and know that he will be with us. And finally, help him. What I experienced on that roof on day one of the storm, putting tarps on my neighbor's roofs and on our own roof, is that I experienced the living Christ in my brothers and sisters. That I experienced God in their works and kind and loving acts. And I hope and pray they experienced Christ in me. Probably not a whole lot because I was pretty frazzled. <laughs> but nonetheless, I hope people experience Christ in you. Help him. Help Jesus. Jesus isn't dead but was raised to new life. He was in, resurrected and lives and he lives in each of our hearts. Martin Luther said he is he has taken place in your heart and he is our mighty fortress our stronghold he lives right here and and he loves right here and he he shows his way right here in your hands and your feet and your prayers and your kind gestures and your comments on social media your encouraging words to your neighbor your sharing of this message that you know God is still with us hey check this out God is still with us. So remember, trust him. Wake him. Help him. Be those hands and feet as you're able. We're not able to all pick up a chainsaw and cut this tree behind me. But we're all able to do something. We all have gifts that the world needs. And I hope and pray that you'll share those gifts with those around you. And friends, don't give up hope. God is with us, calming our storms, calming this storm physically, literally, and metaphorically calming all the storms of our life. Remember to trust God in all things. Remember that God is still with you, caring for you, caring through you. God, Christ's peace be in your parts this week, and God bless you. Amen.